everyone. In this episode, we are calling for pilots from all around the world to explore aviation in the United States. If you have your pilot license already, you might want to stay with us because in this episode, we are talking all about FA conversion. With me, Betsy, and Pilot Cast. Ready for takeoff. All right, Gemma. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing fine and really excited with this topic. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, this is a question that 14 Day Pilot Flight Academy mm -hmm. gets quite often. Sometimes we get a um, question from students who want to do training because they're starting from zero, have no experience. And there are also already pilots yes. contacting us. They want to do the flight training as well. But since they already have their own flight experience, it might be a little bit different for them. Correct. And they would have to do um, conversion firms. Yeah. And um, why do people even think about changing, uh, converting their license at the first place? Into the FAA. Mm -hmm. Why? Right? Yeah, this is very unique because people convert their license to the, um, the FAA is because a lot of um, private jet, mm -hmm. business jet, and then airlines requires you to have the FAA license. Mm -hmm. Like China, if you want to become a pilot over there, you need to have the FAA pilot license to work in China. Okay. Oh, okay. So, and also some airlines or some small operators, they put on their like career, uh, if you have the FAA pilot certificate, you have priority. Oh, so, okay. so a lot of things like that. And also it's easier to get and more flexible. And for, for let's say you already have like ATPL from IKO country, mm -hmm. like Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia. And then for you to get the FAA ATP is easier. The process is really straightforward. And after you have that ATP, then it's like a freedom for you to find a job. Whether you you become a ferry pilot or you come uh, you you become like a regional pilot in America, uh, business jet, and a lot of people will hunt you. Oh wow, that's that's great. Yeah, so it's basically like you have more bargaining power by having the FAA pilot certificate. Mm, okay, but even for people who just um, want to go on general aviation, not necessarily for a career. Um, FAA license, FAA pilot certificates have more benefit because it doesn't Correct. expire. Yeah, that's one of the benefit. There's no expiration date on the FAA. Mm -hmm. And comparing to other countries, let's say Indonesia, mm -hmm. even though Indonesia adapt the, uh, the flat review concept, but they don't really apply it. So every year you need to do like proficiency check to activate even your commercial pilot. Oh, okay. And that will cost you a lot of money. You need to fly like maybe... Uh, five hours I think right and then you need to have like a check right things like that so the pilot proficiency check normally is applied under 6158 is for like the jet airplane thing um, that requires operating but like for um, general aviation uh, single engine airplane multi-engine airplane for the for for a reactivate or or renew your license normally we adopt the flat review it's not under the proficiency check like that so it's a little bit confusing but in the FAA is very straightforward you you can get your flight review every 24 calendar months with mm -hmm. the flight instructors and you don't have to get a check right because a flight review is a training it's not a test and minimum is one hour ground and one hour uh, flight. That's a minimum. Mm -hmm. But normally, if you're not flying for so long time, maybe two, three hours will be adequate for you. Mm -hmm. And also the ground portion could be with us, a flight instructor, or you can join the wing program of the FAA safety, right? And then you can get a credit for compensating your um, the flight review. And also, if you get another check right of the FAA that will cover your license currency mm -hmm. so that will continue uh, automatically con extend for 24 calendar months so that kind of flexibility and benefits as a benefit for us if you if you are a faa pilot holder like you said every time we finish a check right then the 24 calendar months clock will restart yes and correct count again towards any FAA check right no matter you get a, like a lower ratings let's say you already atp for a big jets and tomorrow you'll take the single engine c ratings mm -hmm. then that involve faa for doing the check right your license will extend for 24 calendar months 
Mm -hmm. And what happened after that 24 calendar months, you can just hire fly with the flight instructor, get a training, then they will send you off for that. So it's really easy and and cost effective efficient that's why people hunt the faa pilot certificate and mm -hmm. also it's easier to fly like you fly the november airplane around the world um uh, it's very easy to take the airplane and fly under uh, that regulation oh okay and you mentioned several times about regulations some like chapters on the far for uh, you uh pilots who have certification from other country just like how you would have in your own country you would have a regulation for the aviation same thing in the us we refer to far federal aviation regulation mm -hmm. and the chapter that we want to look at or you want to look at for the conversion is 6175 correct 6175 yeah. so that's all conversion for any um iqo mm -hmm. countries if you're a holder of their pilot certificate then you can get a faa private pilot for free Mm -hmm. So it means it's all paperwork. You can go for the FAA and apply for 6175. So if you don't have ATP, if you have commercial, it will be downgraded to the private pilot. And after you get it, you apply for that. The FAA will talk with your DCA, your regulator country, to confirm, to verify whether or not you are a real pilot. Yeah. Then you will talk with your regulator. They will talk each other by email. Uh, Maximum within 90 days. That's that's too long, actually. But uh, in maximum, maximum, yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, like 30 days, uh, you already got it. Like a verification of authenticity. Mm -hmm. That's a letter that you really need to get. Verification of authenticity is mm -hmm. a VOA. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna use that. It's valid for um, uh, six, six months, months. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you will bring that letter to the FAA. Uh, flat standard district office or FISDO, FISDO. anywhere in the world mm -hmm. okay you bring that and they will give you the temporary airman certificate right okay yeah. just like that it's all paperwork Correct. no um, extra flight hours no. no testing but if you want to fly mm -hmm. with your new certificate you need to get endorsement of flight review from the flight instructor yeah okay that's after you correct get. and also when you are taking the check ride mm -hmm. most of the time they they use the private pilot for rain base and they are going for instrument rating mm -hmm. during the check ride you need to show the verification of authenticity yes okay yeah. it happened once with my students he already hold the foreign base with the plastic card. And when we show up with the examiner, he asked about a VOA. Mm. Uh, the VOA was expired. And unfortunately, we need to cancel the check ride. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's too bad. So for the check ride purposes, the VOA must be current. So it's for 60, uh, so, sorry, six months. Uh, six months mm -hmm. Yeah. Then uh, you need to talk again with the FAA. Then they will issue the new VOA. Then you're good for the check ride. Yep. And... If you get a private pilot, then they will give you a private pilot bracket foreign base. It means that this license will be attached with your uh, foreign license. So mm -hmm. if you are not maintaining your foreign license currency, then this FAA private pilot will not be um, valid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, again, it's paperwork, mm -hmm. and there are some forms that we have to do mm -hmm. have to fill you can go from email or mail it to the fa Correct. or don't forget iacra yeah we can submit an online application through iacra iacra.fa.gov yeah. yeah and then once you get the voa and then it will um automatically get uploaded in the iacra correct so it will like avoid some problem maybe when your mail gets lost yep. and stuff yep. like that you can just log into your iacra check on it um, once in a while until it gets uploaded once it gets uploaded you can just download it and that's yours yes for the next six and that's months. free from the faa yeah really great mm -hmm. service so if you do it um if you complete the application from fisdo i heard it's free right yeah but if you go to an examiner which you can go to an examiner and that might cost some fee yeah and i don't think the examiner wants to do it anymore uh is to complicate it for them is it's, it yeah even it's easier for you to just jump make an appointment to the fisdo and they will give you right away and maybe they will ask you a little bit about english to make sure that you're english proficient mm -hmm. uh some of my students from italy and from european uh, the examiner uh, inspector 
uh, he 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 opened the var and asked him what is this and try to read this and try to read that and oh, okay. yeah things like that but they don't have to ask you okay legally they can ask you but normally they don't yeah and it's one thing to keep in mind is that it's not a test it's just a veri- verification they want to yeah. verify that you um can actually read speak and write Correct. understand english yeah. And they want to make sure that, well, you are what you are. Like those documents that you present is really you. Yes, so, exactly. Mm-hmm. And also the requirement to like to do the first step of the application is pretty straightforward. You just have to fill up the form, which is 8060-71. Yeah. Again, you can get it on IACRA. Mm-hmm. And then have a copy of your uh, pilot license yeah. and also your medical. Correct. And that's it. That's all you need. Let's say you um, do it. Get the um, FAA foreign base private mm-hmm. pilot certificate, yeah. and then the pilot would like to take for uh, instrument rating. Can they convert their instrument rating? Okay, there are two cases. It's very interesting. Let's say if you are a pilot in your country and you already have instrument rating, yes. Okay, mm-hmm. then you come to the FAA. You want your instrument rating attached to your pilot certificate. Mm-hmm. You want to get that privilege so you can do it within 24 calendar months before you apply for that instrument rating under foreign regulation right you need to have a test mm-hmm. a written test for 50 questions okay it's different tasks with the normal ifr us test pass because if you go over the training and go over the check right private pilot foreign base but your instrument rating is us test pass okay okay but if you don't want to take that then you will take the 50 questions mm-hmm. for knowledge sets, mm-hmm. okay? That uh, U.S. test pass is a 60 questions. Mm-hmm. So it's two different things. But in this instrument, it's also, again, it's to rely on your uh, currency in your country. Mm-hmm. Because I found in some countries really hard to get your uh, license current again. You need to fly and, mm-hmm. and somehow you cannot fly with your flying club. You need to come back with your flying school and they will charge you a lot of money. Mm, okay. So for, for some pilots, instead of they apply for that um, conversion, direct conversion instrument, normally they come to get U.S. test pass instrument rating. Oh, all right. Okay. Then it's two different things. Mm-hmm. Your private pilot is your pilot certificate, but mm-hmm. the instrument rating is a rating. It's a rating. Okay. Mm-hmm. So your rating will be um, under U.S. test pass. And your private pilot will be under verification. The Got foreign it. Base. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's two different things. So the other thing is, if you already have the multi-engine. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Can you take the multi-engine into the FAA? Once you convert your license, mm-hmm. like we mentioned before, no matter how advanced your license is, you will get FAA private pilot certificate and all the ratings that comes with it. Yeah. And remember, that's a foreign-based certificate, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, let's say you have a type rating. Okay. You have a 737 in your country, mm-hmm. 8320. Mm-hmm. How about that? Can you carry on that rating? I think you can. But you have a limitation. Mm-hmm. You what got is a the limitation? Li- the VFR-only limitation. Oh, okay. 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 And including the multi-engine. Mm-hmm. Normally, they give you like VFR-only because you, you never show to the examiner that you are instrument proficient in that multi-engine. Mm, okay. Okay. So other than foreign base only, mm-hmm. which is the foreign base, it means that your pilot certificates rely on your foreign license mm-hmm. currency. Yes. The other limitation is could be VFR only on your ratings. Mm. So that's the thing. If you fly the 737 or any uh, multi-engine, remember, you may have that limitation Unless you show or you demonstrate to them that you can fly instrument under that um, ratings. Okay, got it. That's something that you pilots would have to um, write down maybe. Just be aware of all of their limitation, all of the requirements. So you make sure that you get, well, whatever your goal is. And now you want to get your commercial. Okay. You need to get a check right. Oh, we need to get the check right right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the civilian... Based on the document that I have, any pilot certificate that issue was issued before August 4th, 1997, uh, the FAA will give you maximum private pilot for the foreign. But if you want to get an FAA standalone, then you need a check ride. 
Got it. Okay. So when you get a commercial check ride, you will have standalone check a uh, uh, pilot certificate, mm -hmm. which is not relied to another pilot certificate. Mm -hmm. So it's a standalone. Okay. okay. Yeah. So usually people who come to our flight school and uh, give us questions about it, one thing that they have to keep in mind and be aware of is that um, the requirements for flight hours for commercial in FAA is more than the requirements for some country. Yeah, part part 61 requires a total time to 250 hours. Correct, yeah. 50 hours could be in a flight simulator, mm -hmm. AATD, but 200 hours should be in the flight time. Yeah, and then also 100 hours of PIC, 50 hours of cross-country. Yeah, that's so correct. So for other pilots who come to the USA and want to, uh, let's say they already have their... Um, flight hours. Yeah, they have to make sure that they satisfy all of those requirements. Exactly, and also the night time. Don't mm -hmm. forget about it. There are some countries that they don't have adequate night time that required. So it's like a solo night time. Mm, okay. Maybe they have a night time, but they they don't have like solo VFR night time. Oh, got it. So they need to fly, right? Yeah, and then they might have to do some time building. Correct. If or they don't have two hundred fifty yet, or they might have to. Like, again, do the time building to satisfy. So let's say they come with already 200-something flight hours. Does that mean they don't have to do any training at all? Just, like, check right right away? Or how does that work? They need to have a training, 20 hours with authorized flight instructor. Yep. And remember, you need to have 10 hours complex airplane. Mm -hmm. So maybe in your country, you don't need that mm -hmm. during the training. But here in America... Under the FA regulation, you need to have 10 hours complex airplane. Even though the check rides could be done in the normal airplane, but you still need to have that. So it means within 20 hours of training, we need to run that Cessna 172 RG or Piper Aero okay. to make sure you can fly the complex airplane, which mm -hmm. is, has controllable pitch propeller, and then you got a flaps and also retractable landing gear. Yep. Right? Yep. Yeah. And that is all of those requirements. Is you can find it in part 61129. Yes, correct. So look at 61129, you get all of the requirements there, look at your logbook. And the good thing is that FAA accepts all flight hours. Correct. So it yeah. doesn't matter where you do it, mm -hmm. wherever your country is, it doesn't matter when you do it, as long as it is locked. Locked, correct. Then it is eligible for the requirements. Yes. Yeah. But another thing is that, um, the interesting part, sometimes we get students who want to convert their license because they know that um, FAA pilot certificate doesn't expire, but their license is already expired. Or, there you go. Or maybe they're like right at the edge. Yes. When their license almost expired, they haven't been um, flying, they've been away from the aircraft for like a couple of years already. Yeah. And that is where, as flight school, we would suggest... Um, for them to still do some training. That's a deadlock. When you come to our flight academy, when they come to our facility, mm -hmm. with the expired foreign license, we cannot do anything about it. They have to have it um, Current, yeah. valid. There's again. no way for us to verify that because mm -hmm. the FA will talk with the DC and DC will do verification. They will say to the FA, hey, this guy's license is expired. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with it. And I find a lot of friends that stuck and trapped in this situation. They got their pilot license in Australia. Okay. And Australia is really hard for them to get it current again. They need to fly there, to the flying club, flying school, and get a check ride. This takes so long time. Oh, right. So complicated. So normally they stuck in this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's why a lot of people, they're really happy to get the FAA license as a mother license. Yeah, that's, that's easier. So, well, that's unfortunate for yes. that case. But they're also case, like I said, they're like already at the edge when their pilot um, license almost expired, mm -hmm. but haven't expired yet. That's when we talk about proficiency and currency. Yeah. Another thing with the FAA is that even though your um, pilot certificate doesn't expire, but there are some currencies that you want to uh, keep yes. up with. Because Plus. and even if you keep up with the currency, that doesn't it is not a guarantee that your actual flying skill is yep. proficient. Yep. That you can actually conduct a safe flight doing those operations. Yeah. Your license may still valid, but you cannot land the airplane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's so dangerous, right? The requirement that FAA has is bare minimum. Correct. And pilot would always want to have a standard higher than the FAA. And uh, they encourage you to know your personal minimum. Correct. Yes. Okay. So let's say I'm not flying the G1000 for a year. 
Mm-hmm. Even though I fly the 737, I know all the glass cockpit things. But when I jump to the new airplane, let's say I fly the twin engine with a G1000, which is it has been a while for me not flying. FAA wants me to know my limit. I'm not going to fly this airplane solo or with my students. I'm going to hire an instructor to sit with me and get myself current and proficient. And right. and what do you say? Um, I feel confident and comfortable to fly this airplane under bad weather because that's better, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. No matter how many flight hours you have locked in your logbook, but Correct. if it has been a while or... We are you, human. We we'll forget things. Yeah, we forget yeah. things. Pilot gets rusty all the time. Correct, and, and we are behind the airplane, and that's really dangerous. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why aviation is very expensive. So make sure to, you, 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 you work hard, you're saving the money to maintain your currency. Right. The yeah. longer you let yourself away from the airplane, not opening the book, not playing from the simulator, that will be more costly for you to get yourself top of the game. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now the ATP is another game. Mm-hmm. Even though in this document, uh, we see that the FAA will only give you maximum private pilot for in, um, that's on a volume five airman certification, right? But if you open the 61-153, okay. Okay, they, they give you like exception. So the eligibility for you to become ATP. So at least hold either a foreign airline transport pilot license with instrument privilege or a foreign commercial license with instrument rating. So it means if you're already ATPL holder from okay. ICAO, mm-hmm. you can get ATP FAA. You hmm. can do the check right of the ATP FAA. Okay. You don't have to back to the commercial because if you already have the ATPL, then you follow the ATP CDP course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. That's a new program. It means you will need to sit about 60 hours of ground co- course. It's about seven days. And then you will have like one to two session of the level D simulator. Okay. Okay. In the, in the turbojet airplane. Mm-hmm. Give you a family session. Then you're allowed to take the knowledge tasks of the ATP. And after that, you can jump into the, F- uh, the FAA training of the ATP and also the check ride. Oh, right. Okay, so that's the exception. It, it means from the ATPL uh, IQ, you can jump into the, the FAA ATP through the CTP course, and then you got an ATP check right. It's pretty straightforward, and also you only need to do the CTP and the knowledge testing. And you can do it in the 142 certified training center under the FAA, mm-hmm. and they will arrange everything for you. Well, that is quite an extensive explanation mm-hmm. about how to do the conversion. And we, we really love to welcome everyone to talk with us. Okay, just just call this number and then we're going to talk. We will guide you how to get your ATP to ATP conversion, how to get a commercial or even instrument rating. Mm-hmm. We're more than happy to help other, other pilots around the world. Okay, I guess, well, that should be it for the episode today. Yeah. We've talked about a lot of things and pilots, make sure that you are well informed. All of the um, foreign chapter, all of the documents are already listed. So make sure you check it out yourself and read on it. If you have any questions, shoot us a message. We have a WhatsApp, email, and also a command below and we can discuss. Hopefully this episode will help you so much. All right. I'll see you guys next time in the next Pilotcast episode. Bye.